In this video, we're going to look at the Joule Thompson experiment. Now, the Joule Thompson experiment can be viewed as an updated, more rigorous version of the Joule experiment. And we'll look at, you know, what exactly the Joule Thompson experiment was doing uh, in this video. So basically what you have here with the Joule Thompson experiment setup is you have a, a cylinder that's insulated, right? So that there's no transfer of heat uh, outside of the, the expanding gas, right? And you basically have the gas trapped in this volume in its initial state V1 right um, you have it trapped in this this small section of the cylinder and it's separated from the other section of the cylinder by a porous plug and what that means is that you know the gas can't be um, the gas can't freely expand to that region it has to be pushed through this plug right so uh, by having this set up with a porous plug when you apply uh, any sort of pressure here that's going to push this gas through the porous plug and to the expanded volume on the right side, right? So basically this plug, this uh, piston on this side pushes on the gas until it forces the gas through the, the porous plug um, in a bit of a more violent expansion than we see with the Joule free expansion where you're just turning a valve and allowing the gas to freely expand here, right? So. Uh, so this is more or less what you get with the Joule uh, Thompson experiment. You get the gas being pushed through this porous plug to an extend, ex, exp, expanded volume V2. So basically you have, if you want to get the total work that's done in this case, right? So there's going to be total work done. And it's basically going to be a sum of the work that's done on the left-hand side of this guy. Uh, plus the work in expanding to the right. Right, so you can kind of think of this as a two-step process. You basically have on the left-hand side a compression of the gas through the porous plug and an expansion of the gas on the right-hand side into the other half of the gas cylinder. Right, so that's what I mean by work done on the left and work done on the right, kind of separating them at that porous plug. So we're doing PV work, right? So we know we're going to have uh, negative PDV for each one of these. And since this is work, I'll go ahead and put the, the integral here, right? So we know we're starting at a volume V1 here. In the initial state, we're at a volume V1. We're going to say that we compress to a volume of zero at the porous plug. And that's going to be at a uh, pressure P1 dV. Right? And then on the uh, right-hand side, we have the expansion from the, por the point of the porous plug, 0, to V2. And that's going to be at P2 dV. Right? So now, solving the, these integrals, right, you're going to have negative. Right? The first one's going to be 0, since we're at the porous plug. That's going to be 0, uh, minus P1 V1. Right, so basically you pull P1 out of that uh, integral and then you uh, multiply on the inside. But since that first term is zero, I'm just going to have that be zero. And that's going to be minus P2V2 uh, minus zero in that case, right? So we end up with the total work being done is going to be P1V1, right? Since these negatives cancel out, that's P1V1 minus P2V2. Okay, so we have the total work being done uh, in this process, and what we want to do is, since there's, since we know that Q is going to be equal to zero, right? We know that this is insulated, so Q is equal to zero. If we look at the first law of thermodynamics, then our delta U is going to be equal to the work, right? Since Q is zero, uh, delta U is just going to be equal to the work. So that means that delta U is going to be equal to P1V1 minus P2V2, right? Because we just saw for the total work here. We know that this delta U is just a difference between the uh, final and initial work. So we can really uh, have this as U2 minus U1 is equal to P1V1 minus P2V2, right? Um, and then if we rearrange these guys, then you uh, do the algebra here. You have U2 
plus P2V2 is equal to U1 plus P1V1. Right, so all I do is just move P2V2 over here, U1 uh, over to the right hand side, and that gives you this. Well, we have the definition of enthalpy, right? Enthalpy is just U plus PV. So what this is telling us is that the final enthalpy is going to be equal to the initial enthalpy. And so that means that this is a constant enthalpy process, right? So in, in doing this type of expansion through a porous plug, you're actually holding the enthalpy constant. So we call this an isenthalpic process ice enthalpic right so just like you might have isobaric or isochoric this is an ice enthalpic process where the enthalpy is held constant throughout the uh throughout the expansion right so our joule thompson experiment um our joule thompson expansion is a ice enthalpic process so uh what are we actually looking at here right so we're looking at the change in temperature with respect to pressure at constant enthalpy and we actually call that the joule thompson coefficient so the joule thompson coefficient is usually we use the greek letter mu to represent the joule thompson coefficient mu sub jt and this guy is going to be the change in temperature with respect to pressure at constant enthalpy right so that's what we're really looking at here with the Joule Thompson experiment. And so this guy is called the JT or Joule Thompson coefficient. All right, so how do we relate this back to the internal pressure, right? Because I told you that this is more or less um, a very similar version of the Joule experiment, just with an expanded um, or more rigorous experimental technique, but it's more or less uh, getting after the internal pressure of an ideal gas. So let's show how this is related, right? So if we consider an isenthalpic process, let's consider uh, enthalpy as a function of temperature and pressure, right? If we consider enthalpy as a function of temperature and pressure, we can evaluate a total derivative here, right? So we can have dH is equal to dH dt at constant P dt plus dH dp at constant T dp. And we know that since this, this process is isenthalpic, dH is equal to zero, right? So we know that uh, the total dH is going to be equal to zero. Now, this uh, derivative is our heat capacity at constant pressure. So we can go ahead and call that guy Cp dt plus dH dp at constant T dp equal to zero. Okay, so um, let's say that we take this um, derivative with respect to constant pressure um, and well, with respect to pressure at constant enthalpy, right? So if we take dH with respect to pressure at constant enthalpy, right? Again, we know it's zero, right? So Cp will take the derivative here with respect to pressure at constant enthalpy plus dH dp. Then this will be dp dp at constant enthalpy is equal to zero, right? So we know that since this is dp over dp, that guy's gonna be equal to one, right? And this, this derivative is just our Joule Thompson coefficient, right? This is dt dp, dp at constant enthalpy, right? So this is our Joule Thompson coefficient. So we can make that substitution here. So let's say we got Cp times mu jt, our Joule Thompson coefficient, plus dH dp, this is at constant temperature, that guy is equal to zero. Okay, so let me scroll down here. So solving this guy for dH dp, we end up with the following. 
dh dp at constant t is equal to negative cp mu jt right so we have this expression for the enthalpy change uh the enthalpy variation with respect to pressure right and from the joule thompson coefficient for the joule thompson experiment we know that there is a variation of temperature a non-zero variation of temperature with respect to pressure right so what we can do is relate this to a previous expression that we had for the variation of pressure with respect to temperature so recall that we had the following expression right so um, in a previous video we looked at the uh, enthalpy variation with respect to pressure and we got this result so we had dh dp at constant t is equal to du dv at constant t plus p dv dp constant t plus v right so we got this result from a previous video right our enthalpy variation with respect to pressure uh, right there in that expression is our internal pressure right this internal pressure the exact same uh, property that Joule was after in his free expansion uh, experiment, right? So we have this expression for dHdp and we have this expression for dHdp. So we know if we look at this expression, right? So let me keep this color. So if we look at this expression, right, we know from this experiment, right, that the enthalpy variation with respect to pressure is not equal to this at uh, this alone right this is not equal to the enthalpy variation with respect to pressure at constant temperature right or at least it alone is not equal to the enthalpy variation with respect to pressure it doesn't alone explain this relationship between um, the joule thompson coefficient and the enthalpy variation with respect to pressure. So that means there must be some contribution from this guy. There must be some contribution here. So in a way, this contradicts what we uh, the result that we got from the Joule experiment, right? So this experiment tells us that du dv at constant t is not going to be equal to zero. Right. So this guy is not going to be equal to zero for real gas. And the discrepancy comes from the fact that this value is still small. So it is a small value. But it is some non-zero contribution for real gas. Now, we know that for an ideal gas, uh, the internal pressure is certainly equal to zero. Right. We're able to evaluate that. But uh, for real gas, there is a small contribution for the internal pressure. And we see that here with the Joule Thompson experiment, uh, which, like I said, is a, a more updated version of the Joule expansion that actually um, concludes that there is a small contribution uh, from the internal pressure that is non-zero. So for real gas, it does depend on volume and temperature and has some variation with respect to both variables.